All right, so let's start talking about lesson two, which is learning to lead others, which is very important for what we do in our business because that is our business. Our business is building and leading other people. So interesting, Tay, what do you have written down for today? Yeah, so much good in this. I'll just try to stick to my point so I can actually leave things for you to talk about because I know you've experienced a lot just within your leadership journey that you can share on as well. Uh, man, I think this is crucial because like you said, like we're in a people business. So we're dealing with people uh, every single day. Uh, and with that come the pros and the cons, because I like I always tell Carrie is uh, when you bring somebody into your into your business, like you're bringing that whole person, uh, you're bringing the flaws and all. And many times you have to learn how to maneuver and love people where they are. So uh, this was good for me. Uh, I think the first thing that he talked about, which is we found that to be so true uh, because we've learned that from the top down. We've learned that from Mark and Cammy and Mike and Pam because uh, they always speak about it and they always recognize the people. And so he said people crave the attention and recognition. So uh, for me, I think you have to look at the clues that they've said. The reason they do that because they know this and they want us to feel important. They want us to feel valued and feel like we have a voice and let us know the things that we're doing matter. So with us, we have to understand as leaders we have to let that trickle down within our organization. We have to do that same thing within our team, understanding like our people want that same feeling. Uh, so we have to uh, really pretty much uh, channel what they're doing and kind of do it within our organization as well. So I love that. Uh, the second thing that he said, uh, and man, this was this was good for me. Uh, he said, light a fire within people, not under people, even though sometimes you may have to light a fire under some people, you know, uh, but I love that. And what it made me think about is uh, you have to, uh, when he says light it within people, uh, you have to like, you can't expect people to want your dreams for you. You have to want you have to like help people to want their own dreams. So for me, like that's when it comes to like, when you're trying to light a fire under somebody it's because you want something in return. You want them to do something so you can get something. But when you light it from within them, you know, like it's about that person. Like, I know your story. I know your why. I know why you signed up. So I'm going to help you light that fire within because when the fire goes out, Nobody can like that but you. And you have to be motivated by something that's rooted within you and something that's going to cause you to see the bigger picture and continue to move forward. Uh, so that that was the one that I love. And what I uh, what kind of I thought about this is carries uh, our leaders are kind of going through these uh, similar things. Well, you know, people just need space and grace. And, you know, our leaders are reaching out and asking, like, what do like people asking for breaks? Like as a leader, what do you do? And one advice that Carrie gave to one of our leaders, she said, uh, meet that person where they are. Uh, and I think that's a crucial part of our business is not trying to force things on people. Like you can't want it for them more than they want it themselves. So you have to meet them where they are, love them where they are, understand like we're going through life along with building this business as well. Uh, so we have to give people that grace to uh, be able to uh, grow, give them the space to do it and understand like when we do that, what we're letting them know is like, we care about you. We care about what's happening in your life go and get yourself together, go and get things together. But when you come back, I will be here ready to run with you. And I think that's where that loyalty come in. That would, that's where that respect and just that, that family part of it comes in because they know like, it's not just about the business. I know that you truly care for me and the things that's going on in my life. So I, I thought that was awesome and just a, a great way to just really, uh, like he talks about, build that relationship with those people. Uh, and then the third thing that he said is, uh, get comfortable recognizing people for the good that they do. Uh, and I love that because many times we want to recognize people because we've already set up uh, team things that, you know, we kind of uh, encourage people to do certain things. So uh, we only recognize for the, uh, the goals that they meet and expectations they meet according to what we've set for them. But many times you have to know, like, if you got a six level person, uh, you can't expect them to do eight le level eight type things. Like you got to recognize them for doing a, 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 a level six type thing. You have to recognize them recognize them for what they do at their pace. If you got somebody who's killing it with host to post and you, you're doing these things to do something for Instagram, like recognize that person and get that person a platform to like share with the rest of the team for what they're doing for host to post. Because there may be other people just like her who don't do Instagram and TikTok, but they, they can kill it with uh, this. So I think you have to give them that platform. And I think the perfect example of that is my wife. Again, I always go back to my wife because, you know, if you want to be a leader, then many times you can't, like he said, like you can't just get on and talk about things you're not doing. 
So we had a girl who wasn't used to TikTok, but we wasn't used to uh, host a post, but she did a, a, a Zoom with somebody who's been killing it within host a post. And the girl on our team who was kind of struggling got on and she got out some things. And the one thing that she started to do was do TikTok. And she became one of our top uh, enrollers for last month just for by uh, doing the host a post. So that was because my wife gave somebody who was killing it a platform to actually share what they're doing. And what it did was empower somebody else to try something different opposed to what my wife probably was teaching her. And she had success from that. So uh, many times you have to empower your people. You have to give them platform for the thing that they're doing so that they can uh, elevate and empower other people as well. So I thought that was super awesome. And then just the last thing that I share, and I think this, man, this is just, uh, cause we, like you said, we're in the people business. So people are constantly coming and people are constantly going within our business, uh, within the company. Uh, and he said, don't burn bridges. Uh, and I think that is, man, that's super important. One of the things that I learned growing up, which, you know, uh, the elders always kind of give you these proverbs, you know, and they say the same people, uh, that you step on, on the way up, you're going to pass those people on your way down. So for me, it was always be humble, show humility, love people, and don't think of yourself more than you are. Uh, so for me, I understand like with this business, understand like you're gonna lose, like you're gonna lose a lot of people in this business, but you have to shift your your mindset on that because you always think you're losing the people, then you're doing yourself a disservice because many people have taken opportunities, taken risks because you uh, gave them an opportunity to uh, bet on themselves. So for me, it's understand like we don't lose people, we lunch people because you decided to invest in yourself. That's a win for us because we didn't give you this opportunity. You probably would have went through life never investing in yourself. You probably would have settled for a 40 hour a work week job and that would have been the rest of your life. But because we came in your life and spoke some type of inspiration and motivates you in a way that you decide to better yourself for once in your lifetime. So for me, you have to understand, we don't lose people, we lunch people. So we can't get mad if people leave. We have to celebrate the fact that we got them to better themselves and come in. So uh, when he say don't burn bridges, I understand like if people wanna walk away, let them walk away. The one thing that I tell myself, like is as a remember to not burn bridges, walk away peacefully and gracefully. You don't have to make a big deal about it. You don't have to be loud about it. You don't have to bash these people. Give those people grace because you don't know where they are in that season of life. And you aren't like, like it goes back to that proverb, the same people that you step on on the way up, you're gonna see them on the way down. So you have to love people. You Like we've had so many probably can give the same thing to you, Joel, about people who leave this company end up coming back years later. And they come back to you for a certain reason and they tell you a story of why they came back to you. And I think that should be celebrated a lot because many people don't have that. So uh, I love that part. And I, I just love what he say, be a bridge builder. Whatever you do, be a bridge builder because what's that gonna help you to do is help people to get to the other side. If you don't have other, uh, uh, if you don't build bridges then you're burning them and you have nowhere to, for these people to go. So you have to always understand like you are leading people somewhere. Well, it's good, well, it's bad, well, it's indifference. You have to always lead people somewhere. So my goal is I don't want to lead people towards me. I want to always lead people up. So regardless, if you're going to join my business or not, I want the, the opportunity to lead you to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is my ultimate goal. If you join our business, great. We're going to help you be successful within this business, but we also want to help you be successful within life, and we want to help you on your spiritual journey to get to know yourself and Jesus at a new level so he can really make an impact on your life way deeper than we could ever could. So that's my ultimate goal is, is just to keep that in the back of my mind. Like We love this business because we, get the, the, we literally get the opportunity to change people's lives. And I think once you change your, your, your mindset on like, and get off the surface of what it means to change somebody's life and really get deep into how you can change somebody's life by this simple opportunity, just uh, inviting them into the opportunity to be a legacy financially, but also building a leg legacy spiritually so where they can change generations to come for their family and the people who they impact. So uh, this was super good because it touched on many levels. And I know we're only stretching the surface of what you're about to go into, Joe. So excited to hear what you got to say now, man. I don't know. Tay just rocked it. That was awesome. Whew. Fire. So learning to lead others, guys, we, we do this to help you learn to lead others. That's the whole purpose of why we do this is to be able to, you know, fill ourselves up, but at the same time, fill you guys up. We need people to feel like they are needed, says, when people feel like they're needed, 
and you recognize them and then you value them and then you care for them, they will do better work because the better people feel, the better they will do. I love this question. How do you know when somebody needs recognition? When they're breathing. Guys, recognition is, is almost like fuel for the soul. Even though everyone will probably say, oh, my love language isn't recognition. 10,000% of the time, it is. Everybody has that sign walking around on them that says, make me feel special. <clears throat> so if you do that extra step of working towards making somebody feel special each day, um, you know, whether it's the person that you're on phone with, with customer service, or, you know, person that's checking you out at the grocery line, or like you said, when you're getting coffee, make sure to take that extra moment and point out something about that person to make them feel special. Leaders are a part of the team, not a part from the team. That's going to be my post today. So anybody else wants to post it, wait until after I post it, because that, that right there was amazing. Your job as a leader is to be a great servant. Leaders must work for their teams and create an environment for others to flourish and become leaders. It says real leadership is something that happens long before anyone appoints you or recognizes you as the leader. So make sure that you're doing the things to make yourself valuable, to make yourself show up to those points where people aren't at, because people then will start turning around and pointing to you. Uh, I, I love that whole conversation on, on, you know, not burning bridges. I'm only going to focus on this for a little bit because I think the building people is that just the most amazing thing we should be talking about, but don't burn bridges. It is valuable. Just like Tay said, because of the fact that you never know when you're going to need that hand up. Um, one of the things that he said that I, I loved, and I had wrote it down even before he said it, is yes, absolutely burn the boats, but not the bridges. You know, burn the boats means you're never going back, you know, in your mind, you're never going back to that uncomfortable place that caused you to make the decision to make a change but don't burn the bridges because the bridges are what you have to go across to get to the other side. And with building bridges, the conversation that I want to have as far as leaders and building others is what John Maxwell always talks about the leadership ladder. He said, you know, first you climb the ladder. And like Tay said, you may step on some hands going up those ladders. So make sure you're being careful about where you're putting those feet when you're going up the ladder. But then once you get up the ladder, the next point that you need to do is become a ladder holder. You need to hold that ladder so that somebody else can climb up it. You're giving somebody else the opportunity to climb up the ladder, which is something that we do so well in this company is that is really what you are in this company. You're a ladder holder. But then the next step that you need to get after becoming a ladder holder is becoming a ladder builder. That is where you give the ability to build other leaders to grow other leaders. That is the pinnacle of leadership is where you're able to not only just develop leaders, you're able to develop leaders who develop leaders because you're not going to be holding their ladders. They're going to be holding their ladders. So make sure that you are paying attention to the things that you're doing. He talked about being intentional with the actions that you take, you know, Making somebody feel important is special. Making somebody feel valued is special. But giving somebody a hand up and giving them the ability to climb a ladder and then giving them the ability to build ladders for others is how your team is going to grow and grow huge. Um, obviously, get comfortable recognizing people. Great leaders know that the greatest challenge comes from within themselves. Getting the title is not the end. It's the beginning. You know, we, we talk about all the time is that, that, you know, we've got ranks and we've got top earners and ranks and top earners are completely different than top leaders. You know, top income earners sometimes get there because of hard work and 
going through and maybe signing somebody up that kills it on TikTok. The person on TikTok is killing it and they're reaping the benefit of planting that seed. But that doesn't mean that they're a true leader. And that's kind of what Mark's been talking about these last two weeks is check the leadership because of the fact that sometimes that person may have the success, but they're not moving things forward for the entire team. So be that person for your team that he basically says, uh, earn your position and then earn it every day. But the leader is the person who brings others along with them. You can only lead other people by how you talk to them, the work ethic that you put in and show them, and what you do to help them. Oh, man. I'm looking over my note sections over here. Your title doesn't change who you are. So that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to work on the who you are. You know, your greatest challenge as a leader is going to be working on yourself because it's easier to sit on Zooms and tell everybody else what to do. But the moment we get off the Zoom, well, that's when we got to start working on ourselves to back that up. Titles are temporary. Who you are is the real leadership and never changes. Earn that title. But then once you earn the title, make sure that you're living up to that title. You know, if somebody looks up to you, what kind of example are you setting? Make sure that you're setting the example that causes them to want to run. Uh, love what Tay said about, you know, when people leave and they, for whatever reason, they stop working or they stop believing in themselves and, and they go away, but then something picks at their heart again. And they're like, I need to pick this up two or three years later. When they come back to you, that is the greatest compliment you can have for your leadership because there was something, and I love what Tay said about them telling the stories of why they came back and why they chose you. Guys, be the person that's here long enough to have people come back to you because that's what people say all the time too, is how do you sign so many distributors? Well, when you've been around long enough to get good enough same thing with your leadership. When your leadership has been around long enough and gotten good enough, people recognize it and people will come back to you. So be around long enough, put in the work long enough, and it will pay off. Like you said, the work that you're doing now, the seeds that you're sowing now may not show up in the next season's harvest. It could be a couple seasons away. So never neglect to do the work and do the watering because sometimes some seeds take longer to grow than others. They don't all grow at the same time. That's why we're constantly telling you, throw out as many seeds as possible because you don't know which one is going to take root and which one's going to grow. So with that guys, love this. During difficult times, people need a leader who keeps them focused on what's possible, not what's going wrong. Guys, today, go out and be that leader for your team. Point them to what's possible and continue to be positive. And we'll see you here again next time.